Let's say you just got yourself such a cheap Bluetooth music receiver from eBay. And now you want to create a music system with it by adding a power supply, amplifier and speaker. Well, I actually created such a system in one of my previous videos. But back then I was having the problem that interference noises were clearly hearable while using one 12V power supply for the amplifier and an additional 5V linear regulator for the Bluetooth receiver. The simplest solution to get rid of the interference sounds back then was to simply use an additional 5V mains power supply to power the Bluetooth receiver. But why exactly did this additional power supply solve the problem? And are there maybe cheaper ways to achieve the same interference free results? Let's find out in this video. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB who increased their user base by 226,000 and produced over 4,490,000 PCB designs in the past year of 2019. So why not give their service a try by uploading your Gerber files today and ordering your custom PCBs. To properly recreate the interference problem, I started by removing the housing of the Bluetooth music receiver. After soldering a wire to its ground and 5V pin, I hooked it up to 5V power to find out that it still works fine and that my smartphone can connect to it. Now at this point we obviously need the amplifier from back then, but since I could no longer find it anywhere, I was pretty much forced to gather all the required components and start building a second amplifier based on the schematic I created back in the days. And after around 2 hours of soldering, the amplifier was complete and does not blow up when powering it with 12 volts. Perfect! As a first test, I cut up a 3.5mm audio cable in order to expose its 3 wires. After determining that the blue wire was ground, I soldered it to the ground of the amplifier boards and afterwards I soldered the left and right channel to the amp inputs. Now after hooking up a speaker to the amp and the audio cable to my phone, you can hear that the audio amplification works just fine and that there are no buzzing or interference noises whatsoever. So next I used the 5V linear regulator to step down the mandatory 12V amplifier voltage to 5V. This way I can hook up the Bluetooth music receiver to the same power source. And as you can see, it works without any problems. But as soon as I connected the audio cable, you can clearly hear the interference sounds I was talking about earlier. So where do they come from? To find that out, I firstly had a look at the waveform of the sound, which looks something like this and is characterized by reoccurring pulses. Next, I hooked up a 1 ohm current shunt in series to the Bluetooth receiver's power line and had a look at the voltage across it. As you can see, the current draw pulses of the receiver look pretty similar to the interference sounds we are experiencing. So in conclusion that means that the receiver's current draw is what is causing the unwanted noises. And you can hear them since the amplifier as well as the Bluetooth receiver share the same ground potential. Simplified speaking, that means noise gets injected into the audio signal ground as well as the amplifier's ground. And that is something we have to change in order to get rid of the buzzing. But before finding proper solutions to this problem, I want to prove that my amp design is not the reason for this problem. That is why I hooked up all of the components and signals to a pre-made amplifier board based around the PAM8406IC. And as you can once again hear, the interference problems do still exist, but are a bit less hearable because this PCB design is way more optimized than my crude perfboard soldering design. So the first proper solution to this problem is like earlier mentioned by using two mains power supplies. 
This way there's only a ground connection through the audio cable, but all the noise creating currents are kept away from the amplifier, because the power grounds are isolated from one another. I actually built up such a two mains power supply circuit once again, in order to let you hear that it truly does solve the problem. The next solution is to use an amplifier board which comes with a ground pin and an A ground or analog ground pin, which are isolated from one another, like with this TPA 3100D2 amplifier board. This way, by hooking up the audio signal ground to A ground and the power ground to ground, we can keep most of the power noise away from the audio signal. And as you can hear, it drastically reduces the interference noises. Because of this solution, you might think that isolating the audio ground from the power ground would always be the best solution. And that is what the comment section underneath my videos and I thought as well. That is why the third and supposedly best solution should be a ground loop isolator that sits in between the Bluetooth audio signal and the amplifier inputs and isolates the grounds from one another. So I got myself such a ground loop isolator, which after tearing it open later, basically consists of two transformers, which like already mentioned create a galvanic isolation between the inputs and outputs. And after placing it in between the Bluetooth outputs and the amp inputs, we can hear that it pretty much changes nothing when it comes to the interference noises. So sadly, I was wrong with this solution and we should focus more on creating a separate power ground for both devices. And that brings us to the last solution, which is a DC to DC converter suited for isolating DC power rails. By simply placing it in series to the 5V power line of the Bluetooth receiver, we isolated its power ground from the amps power grounds and thus once again achieved pretty much the same effects two mains adapters would have achieved, only at a smaller budget. And of course if you're using battery power then two mains adapters would not be possible and you would have to use this solution as a replacement. And as you can hear the interference sounds are gone with this solution and I hope that you learned a thing or two through this video and maybe even use some of its ideas in your own upcoming projects. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!